Yes, hello folks, welcome to Beyond the Pits. I'm your host Phil Brown of course. Um, thank you for joining me on this video. I know I don't typically do a lot of videos. You can see my face, you all know why. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I wanted to address a couple of things. First of all, the, um, the, the tweet that was put out on the Beyond the Pits Facebook, the tweet that was put out on our Twitter account and the message was put on our Facebook page about upcoming changes. Um, there's going to be a lot more video on the Beyond the Pitch account. Um, it's not just going to be me. There's going to be a number of different individuals involved. We're excited about the direction we're going in. Uh, we're working with a partner to bring this to you. Hopefully, we'll have something to announce very, very, very soon. But uh, we're excited about the direction the show's going in. And uh, we'll be covering Spanish football, Italian football, German football, MLS, you name it. Uh, we're getting into it. And uh, we're looking to make the channel five days a week, uh, various different video content uh, with people all over the world being involved. And um, the company that wants to partner with us is making a big investment. And uh, we're excited about the direction we're going in. So whenever we have that deal completed, um, we'll be able to name uh, the partner and uh, we we'll, we'll should be broadcasting that very, very, very soon. At the moment, be on the pitch. Uh, we've been in a bit of a holding pattern with the content. Uh, we haven't been putting much out. That's partly down to these discussions, but um, that's going to resume very, very shortly. The weekly matches netted show is really the only thing we've been putting out recently. That's going to continue. Um, so uh, I'd probably record that tonight with uh, Martin Wallwork. So thanks very much for your patience and support on that. And uh, we're excited about what we're going to do in the future. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll have some more information on that. On this video, also, I want to talk about the United Liverpool game this weekend, of course. Um, and I also want to mention uh, my comments on the Robbie Savage article that was written about Ryan Giggs not getting a Swansea job. So, and, and I'll get into that first. So, Robbie Savage wrote an article uh, basically lamenting the fact that Ryan Giggs even had to be interviewed at all for the Swansea job. Um, Savage believed that based on Giggs' accomplishments as a footballer, he should have got the job no matter what. And um, this illustrates a bigger problem with young British managers not being able to get high-level jobs. Bob Bradley, of course, got the job, and um, this upset Robbie Savage. Now, it amazes me how many times this lesson needs to be learned, that being a great footballer means nothing about whether you're going to be a great manager. Um, some attributes overlap. But for the most part, they're completely different occupations. It's it's plumber electrician. Ryan Giggs was a great player, but some of the concerns that people have had about Ryan Giggs would be a much bigger concern if you're a manager. Um, looking at the successful managers in football, the players would run through a brick wall for them. Simeone, Federal Madrid players would run through a brick wall. They overperform. Make no mistake about it at Swansea, you need your players to overperform. You're not sending Galacticos at Swansea. So you need to get the best out of them. You need to be able to motivate them. Um, if you take a look at uh, Conte, you, uh, you take a look at uh, his Juventus same attributes. Players who have gone through a brick wall for him. Um, Guardiola, uh, Mourinho, you know, Klopp. Players that unequivocally Managers who have the complete trust of their players unequivocally and, and will do anything for them. Ryan Giggs doesn't get to exonerate himself from what happened under Louis Van Hal. It's fair to say that dressing room was pretty fractured under Ryan Giggs and uh, there was repeated leaks and many native fans share this view that there was a concerted effort amongst United players, actually native players, uh, and current United players to get him the job, which I thought was really disrespectful to Van Hal. You had people like Ashley Young really coming out saying Giggs should be given the job. Um, you had his ex teammates, uh, his ex manager Ferguson, you had uh, Rio Ferdinand, Gary Neville, Paul Scholes, all in the media saying, you know, Giggs should be given the job and all this. Uh, really, really disappointing. To, and, and so for me, um, given those types of incidents, we all know what went on in his personal life. That matters as a manager. Um, not so much as a player, but as a manager, that matters. So for me, I don't think Ryan Giggs has got any divine right to expect to be given a Premier League job. Um, look at it from Swansea's perspective. 
they, it's a gamble. If they get relegated, relegation is going to cost Swansea millions upon millions of pounds. And, um, you know, they have to get this right. They're going to have to take a club that if, if it starts out badly on the rank gigs, they're going to sack them after a month or two. But there's also another attribute that is missing that British coaches, for the most part, not all of them, but for the most part, don't seem to have any interest in addressing. And when it, when you have this sense of entitlement, um, this is this I feel is a perfect reflection of that. British coaches are not bilingual. If you take a look at the top managers in the world, they're all bilingual. Simeone, uh, you know, take a look at Guardiola, you take a look at Klopp, you take a look at all the top managers, most of them. Ancelotti, Mourinho, all that speak different languages. When Gary Neville failed at Valencia, most people said that was because he didn't speak the language. So when you're talking about young British coaches, uh, in a cosmopolitan dressing room, a multicultural players relying on translators or some players to speak the language. Um, you know, Carlos Davis barely spoke a word of English and spent years there. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. Learn another language. Learn how to speak Spanish. Learn how to speak French, German. I watched um, the Bundesliga review this week. They interviewed Thomas Tuchel after the match and asked Thomas Tuchel a question in German and then they asked it in English. He switched between German and English flawlessly. How many young British managers could do that? Now, when you're in a dressing room with players from all over the world, you need to be able to speak more than one language. And, and if you're losing a job to a better qualified individual who's bilingual, oh well. Um, so for me, with that sense of entitlement, British managers should, should understand a second language is going to help you at the highest level in that state. Ryan Giggs needs to go to a lower level football club. Maybe in the championship, which would still be an exceptional job. You look at the championship, there's some um, brilliant coaches down there. Uh, or League One, and show you have an aptitude to deal with things that you don't get in the Premier League level, like uh, the resources, like uh, facilities, uh, different issues that you're going to have at, at, at that level that you won't have in the Premier League. And if, with a guy like Ryan Giggs, who has had such a glittering career, he doesn't even have to do that well to get a bigger job. If he goes to a championship club or a League One club and does exceptionally well, you're going to get the job anyway. He's going to get big jobs. So for me, um, you know, go prove yourself before walking around with a sense of entitlement to get a Swansea job. Same guy, by the way, that felt that he had a, a divine right to the Manchester United job and felt insulted that he wasn't given it. Um, so, can't support Robbie Savage's ar ar argument on that. All right, let's move on to United Liverpool. Big, big game Monday night, of course, at Anfield. Uh, Liverpool have won the last four in a row, <coughs> and um, Jurgen Klopp has them playing very, very well. The only doubt they have, of course, is Gino Wijnaldum, who limped off in the Dutch game against the French, and Joe Allen, both of whom have played every week uh, in every game for uh, Jurgen Klopp. Um, the front three are excellent. They're the joint top goal scorers in the Premier League. Uh, Coutinho, Firmino, Sturridge, very, very dangerous, very quick. Um, and one of the keys to that is Jordan Henderson. Jordan Henderson has the most touches and passes of any player in the Premier League. Um, the key, he, he's not a fancy player. He's not someone that's blessed with enormous, uh, uh, silky touches in class. He's a workhorse. And... That part, that player is really, really important when you've got creative players. You need somebody that's willing to do the groundwork, someone that's willing to, to do the ugly stuff so that Firmino and Coutinho can have the freedom to create. Jordan Henderson is a very, very important player for Liverpool. And so he's the guy that anchors the midfield that, that gives those players the ability to, to create. And um, it's a player, I'm not saying it's Jordan Henderson, but it's a position or a player that United are lacking badly. Paul Pogba, who has recently been renamed uh, the world's most expensive footballer, as that's all he ever seems to get referred to these days, as um, you can see he has a problem with this. So Pogba, when he 
you know, you, you saw it against a few West the Hound match where, where he played for France. He was given a more attacking role. Uh, he didn't have to defend. And he played very, very well. So if you look at United, he's asked to defend. He's not particularly comfortable doing it. Um, United are badly lacking uh, a, a top class defensive midfielder that Mourinho trusts. Mourinho doesn't trust Morgan Schneider. Um, Fellini played in there a couple of times because he gives United a physical presence defensively on set pieces and offensively on set pieces. But he's he's not particularly quick. He doesn't read the game. He's a bit of a liability in tackles. Uh, he's always a yellow card waiting to happen. Um, so um, I, I don't particularly think he's someone Mourinho trusts. I think Mourinho's looking for more of a, a, a world-class defensive midfielder. And I expect United will target that in January. Once you need to get that player, then things like what happened in the derby with De Bruyne will stop happening. Like you saw against Watford, where uh, midfield, central midfield runners weren't being tracked. Um, and then I think you'll start to see the best out of Paul Pogba. I must say I'm amused by some of the criticism of him because, you know, Ronaldo and Messi have distorted the view of, of modern day, the modern-day fan and what a 90 million pound player is. So, of course, Ronaldo went to Real Madrid for 80 million. And when you talk about Paul Pogba going to Manchester United for 90 million, people are saying, um, I wouldn't spend that on him because for that type of money, I'd want a Ronaldo. Someone that can do, do what Ronaldo does. Look, Ronaldo's a freaking agent, okay? Um, even if you hand somebody 100 million right now and say, go buy me another Ronaldo, where is he? So... The idea that that's what we should expect for the hundred million pound footballer is ridiculous. They're not there. And Paul Pogba was never a Ronaldo or Messi type player. Uh, Paul Pogba is a midfielder that would walk into any midfielder in the world. Um, so the idea that this is what you should expect for that money and be disappointed that he's not skipping past players and, and you know scoring Ronaldo type numbers or Ronaldo type assists, you know. It's it's ridiculous. It's a stupid argument. Um, Paul Pogba is a 23-year-old midfielder. Um, you know, will for me grow into one of the best midfielders in the world. But to expect him to be on a Ronaldo type level, um, you know, because he went for 80 million, and that's what the best two best players in the world at the moment do. It's it's madness. So um, silly argument. And uh, once United, in my opinion, get the proper defensive midfielder, uh, United will, will see the best out of him. On the other aspect of midfield, so we have Juan Mata, who's playing as the creative number 10 midfielder. United have had a problem trying to integrate a playmaker for a while. You know, we saw this with, with Kagawa, didn't work. So um, Mata, who many people felt would be one of the first players out on the Mourinho, is doing everything United would want from Wayne Rooney in that position. Um, Mata typically plays quite well against Liverpool. He's got a good record against them. I expect he'd start on Monday against Liverpool. Rooney won't. Uh, Rooney will continue to be dropped, and rightly so. Um, Rooney's been done to death, so I don't want to talk about it too much. But you're talking about a guy that... Um, the discussion between those United fans that watch Wayne Rooney every week and the discussion from pundits and the discussion from the media on Rooney is always very different. Um, I talked to Robbie Earl about Wayne Rooney a couple of weeks ago and I asked him this question about why is it that people who have played the game, professional footballers, always seem to give a very sympathetic view towards Wayne Rooney than what a fan would or... Um, or, or anybody else, and his explanation was because most football players know exactly what Wayne Rooney's going through, how the body no longer responds to the mind, how they've all noticed that step, that, that decline when they play as players where you can't go past players anymore, where players are going past you, where you can't do the things that you want did. Um, and so they have sympathy as players for what he's going through. Um, because they can relate to the experience. Now the media that cover him uh, always confuse me because 
Martin Sumner wrote an article on Wayne Rooney that was unbelievable, saying that if Wayne Rooney had played against Leicester, he'd have had three assists because United scored from three corners. Yeah, and if he played in the 66 World Cup, maybe he'd have had a hat trick if he'd have been standing where Jeff Hurst was. You know, I mean, what absurd levels are you going to go to to defend him? You know, Wayne Rooney uh, probably hasn't been a world-class footballer since 2010. In the Sunday supplement last week, it was said, I mean, John Terry went through a similar decline at Chelsea uh, and England when he hit his 30s. He wasn't given the abuse that Wayne Rooney was. Big differences. John Terry came through the Chelsea Academy. Uh, Wayne Rooney's not a Manchester United Academy player. Um, Wayne Rooney comes from Liverpool. Wayne Rooney's put in multiple transfer requests, and there's been a bit of a rocky relationship between Rooney and United fans for, for a while. The United fans don't particularly want to boo him because they don't want to boo their own players. But, um, you know, the, the comparing him with John Terry is a completely different situation. So, in my opinion, Wayne Rooney won't start this weekend. You'll see Juan Mata in that playmaking role, rightly so. What I expect from United this weekend will be uh, a counter-attacking game, <clears throat> much like what you saw when Mourinho went there when Chelsea beat Liverpool 2-0 uh, to beat them uh, to, to basically end their league title hopes. Mourinho, of course, as we know, will go to Anfield getting uh, a lot of the air of Liverpool fans. He'll not worry about that. It can actually bring out the best of Mourinho. Uh, he thrives in environments like this. He's going to need his players to do it too because... Um, my guess is Liverpool will have the majority of the possession in this game. United will will have to be clinical when they get the ball. And sadly, one of the things that we see in games where United don't have a lot of possession, like we saw it in the derby, um, Wayne Rooney's way too wasteful with the ball in midfield. He gives the ball away far too often. United cannot afford that this weekend. They're going to have to be clinical with the pass and then take the chances. Um, they did the double over Liverpool last season. Van Hal seemed to do quite well against them, but um, you know this is a different Liverpool, and I think Klopp's done a very very good job with them, and um, you know has them looking very similar to what we saw with Liverpool back under Brendan Rodgers. That being said, now Brendan Rodgers when he had Liverpool going for the league title. That being said, I do think this is a Liverpool team defensively that are very vulnerable. I still think they have major problems at the centre of defence, and. Um, at left back as well, where they've got James Milner filling in there for Moreno, who um, most Liverpool fans can't stand. So I do think, you know, with Martial getting his first goal for United last week or two weeks ago, uh, we'll have a bit of confidence about him. Um, you know, United, I feel, man for man, are better than Liverpool up front. Uh, if United's front three fire, they've got a great chance of taking three points in this, this game. So, uh, It'll be really, really interesting to see how this ends up. And um, I expect it'll be an exceptional game, uh, a classic two teams going at each other. United trying to soak up pressure, hitting quickly on the break. And um, an opportunity for a United player to emerge once again uh, and to be revered, most like Mata did with his overhead kicker, Diego Forlan. Um, big, big game for United and Mourinho. Um, Mourinho would be desperate not to, to drop points here after what happened against City in the Derby. Would be a massive three points for United. And for him personally. So um, if I had to make a prediction, I will take United to win it 2-1. So thanks for watching the video, folks. Uh, don't forget, um, more and more will be coming um, in a little better setting than this. Uh, with a variety of different content. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is new. We're going to, you're going to see more of this, and uh, thanks for the support on Beyond the Pitch uh, as we go through these changes. Ciao.